Buenos dias, señoritas y señoritos. Welcome to the second part of our two-part series uh, based on this uh, Vera Files interview of uh, Mr. Antonio Lascañas, the alleged, uh, the alleged uh, verdugo or uh, killer operator of the of the so-called the vow the vow death squad at uh, he recently uh, turned himself over to the international criminal courts jurisdiction and he gave his testimony about uh, the killings he undertook in the in, upon orders of uh, president Rodrigo Roa Duterte and now in his third interview to Mr. Antonio Montalban of uh, of the uh, Vera Files, he revealed how he uh, how he uh, killed people upon orders of uh, uh, Congressman Paulo Duterte, the son of uh, of former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Paulo Duterte represents the first uh, district of uh, Davao City. He's also now in the uh, in the uh, attention or in the public eye because of his alleged 51 billion uh, pork barrel funds and also his uh, his admission that uh, uh, he only got 500 million in pork barrel funds from the Duterte from the Marcos administration in budget year 2024 and that uh, 2 billion was removed from his uh, pork barrel funds. So in this uh, blog, we will discuss uh, how he's also involved in smuggling and uh, how uh, his, uh, and who are his ties in the smuggling business, what, what uh, are the items he is uh, smuggling, and also other uh, irregular irregularities done during his time when he was vice mayor of the vow and uh, likewise we will discuss that controversial tattoo that controversial uh, 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 tattoo uh, that uh, uh, shows him to be part of the i think yakuza if i not mistaken yakuza drug syndicate so or chinese drug syndicate but whatever Basta naging issue yun sa Senate doon. So, as a backgrounder, kaya nga uh, hinati natin itong vlog na ito, uh, as early as uh, 2017 or uh, after one year pa lang sa office si former President Duterte, nag, na, 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 nalagay na sa kontroversiya si Paulo Duterte, Vice Mayor pa siya. Dahil sa mga reports na nagpapasmagal siya ng ukay-ukay, yung mga used clothing na galing abroad. At uh, yun nga, even kami sa Sambuanga, balitang balita ito at uh, kahit daw mga kotse, uh, sugar, uh, 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 big, uh, rice, palay, galing abroad, inismagger nila, galing Malaysia, ga, ga, uh, via, the, via the southern back door. At kahit shabu, kaya uh, kung hindi kayo magtataka, noon time na yun, uh, ang dami nyo, ang dami namin nakikita, mga Lamborghini, mga Porsche, uh, sa Mindanao, ha? <laughs> uh, parang ordinary lang yung mga Lamborghini at Porsche, at saka yung mga D BMW at mga, kwan, mga, mga ibang mamahalin na kotse, ha? Diyan sa, sa, sa Mindanao. Pero doon time pa lang yun, dininay na ni, ni then President Duterte na, uh, nasa nasa smuggling yung anak niya lalo na yung ukay-ukay smuggling at uh, sabi pa nga niya and I quote uh, in defense of his son uh, sabi niya pero kung yung mga jars ukay-ukay yung pinapalusot ng in-laws niya if that is smuggling then give me an accounting and I will resign yon sinabi niya as early as then magre-resign daw siya kung kung involved daw si Paolo, Paolo sa smuggling kasi sabi niya yun daw ang business ng mga in-laws ni Paolo sabi niya I am not defending my son prove it if it is true I will resign yan kasi that time pa lang meron ng meron lang tao nagreklamo sa presidential anti-smuggling group na uh, uh, 
humingi daw isang customs broker at uh, uh, no, isang customs broker and fixer ay inamin na nagbigay siya ng 5 million para sa kaibigan ni at handler ni Paulo para para pabilisin yung mga transactions uh, smuggling transactions pero wala nangyari kumbaga that time pa lang one year one year after pa lang kontrolado na ni Paulo yung Bureau of Customs ganun ang mga balita noon at uh, siya talaga yung may may alam sa mga smuggling kasi yun na nga uh, Uh, nasa 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 uh, smuggling business ng asila ng ukay-ukay at ng kotse at saka ng mga asukal at saka ng mga uh, rice supply so in this vlog kinonfirma ni Arturo Lascañas ang interview na yan na binigay niya sa Vera Files sa uh, uh, an online fact finding fact checking network So, uh, pakinggan natin and uh, we thank Vera Files uh, through uh, headed by my friend si Ellen Torresillas for this uh, YouTube video. Uh, we are using this for the interest of uh, news and uh, interest of uh, reform and justice uh, uh, for the victims sa mga killings na inamin rin ni Las Cajas. So, i-play na po natin ito. The mother was buried in Laud Quarry in Mandog Musgrave. And in the Mandog Musgrave? Mandog Musgrave, yes. Okay. Um, okay, sir, let's go. Uh, this is also about Paolo, but uh, let's shift to the topic of uh, his control of smuggling, no? Yes. In the Dabao port that... Uh, uh, it, it says that at one time you were even tasked to deliver bribe money to the Bureau of Customs. Yes. Uh, can you tell us about that, sir? I was uh, being used by Pablo Duterte as prone in, in the smuggling of rice and illegal drugs of Charlie Tan. Charlie Tan? Huh? That's it. Chinese na naman. Our castle in our group is named Mark Suiko. Okay. He is a multi-billionaire young man. Mark Suiko. He's cashier of Paulo Duterte. Yes. Mark Suiko. Sir, what did they smuggle? Smuggle of uh, rice and, and uh, I think partly ukay ukay. Shabu na o. Shabu. Not ukay ukay. Fraud lang pari ukay ukay. Not so. Not so. <laughs> Sometimes sugar, but sugar. mostly rice. Rice. And then shabu. And then shabu. And shabu. Neil Duterte knows this. He knows about, He knows about this because I told him. You told him? I told him about these activities of power. But uh, he just... Uh, so that is how, how close you were to him? You can tell him about yes. these things? More than it. Okay guys, uh, before we proceed, uh, uh, you know, uh, hearing all this report, we should really pressure the government to look into this. Hindi pwede itapo na lang natin lahat sa ICC na that is now investigating all of this. Pero ito mga smuggling, kung hindi naman related to the killing, na Marcos government should do about this. The, uh, do, should do something about this. Kaya please share this blog to friends and relatives para umabot ito kay uh, President Bongbong Marcos. And uh, he, he, maybe he will still surprise us by showing na meron talaga siyang political will to look into this matter especially involving yung mga yung mga irregular alleged irregularities done and initiated uh, by uh, congressman Paulo Duterte and tell your friends to subscribe to the blogcaster Armandin YouTube channel too thank you Miss and, and uh, how did you react sometimes Sometimes I can feel this reaction. Sometimes he's uh, uh, bloated, angry. Angry. But, yes, but when he lies, it's very easy to catch him because he was so relaxed. And then he will concoct 
הנהג ההיסטורי תוקע בארדטרות. He wanted his mouth to be the source of the, the source of the investigation. That's why what, this is what happened all the killings in Davao City. No policeman can investigate truthfully without the dictation. The dictation of Mayor Duterte called he wanted to be the, the matter of an investigation. No policeman can do it. I see. Because he can create the storyline and then influence yes. the, the police investigation. Not only the influence, but the money. You see, money, he will give, he will give a bribe money, but uh, he disguises it as reward money. I see. So were you aware where this money were coming from? Confidential funds, intelligence funds, peace and order funds? Were you aware? Intelligence funds. Intelligence funds. Yes. Why I was aware of this? Because of my friend. I have a friend, uh, Attorney Jero Santos Leo. He told me how big is the intelligence fund funding the double ditch one while I was receiving a 100,000 a month while Sunny Binabintura receiving almost a million a month. Uh, I see. Again, this is a point of curiosity, sir. No? Yeah. The uh, the use of tattoos. Mm. That is part of the uh, of the criminal organization of the Double Death Squad. The tattoos of the Double Death Squad. So then you have tattoos as part of the Double Death Squad. Yeah, except me, I do, I uh, don't have tattoos, <laughs> but. Uh, the Double Ditch Squad is an organized uh, criminal syndicate led by a public official by the name of Mayor Rodrigo Duterte, is sponsored by the city government. Okay. What about uh, the so-called tattoos of the, the drug triad? Do they have that also? Yeah. Triad Pulo pala, Duterte. triad. What about Pulong, sir? I saw it. Very big tattoo. So, so meron, meron talaga. At the time, Pulong entered the Freemasonry. Okay. When you enter the Freemasonry, you are required to take your clothes. I see. So, when I, when I uh, touched Pulong to take out his clothes, he refused. But uh, he said there was a triad tattoo on his back. I said, I can take care of it. Do not worry. Chinese triad. I am the worshipful master of these lads. I see. <laughs> Double lads, one for nine. Pre-Mason. pre Again, This is not rumor. So you, yes, you saw it yourself. I saw it. Yes, sir. I see. So you and Pulung are brothers in Masonry. Brothers in Masonry. Grabe. So yun na guys, uh, di ba naging kontrobersya talaga yun noon yung uh, 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 challenge ni Senator Trillanes during the investigation yung mga yung multibillion drugs na ipinasok dito sa bansa. No wonder kung si Pulong ang charge sa smuggling kaya na direct uh, uh, walang walang humaharang sa pagpasok ng mga multi-billion drugs dito, di ba? Two times yun. Isa, four billion ata. The second, second one, six billion. And then, na-link nga. Yan na naman, si Michael Yang doon, si Pulong. And then, na-challenge pa ni, ni Trillanes, si Pulong, na ipakita yung likod niya, tanggalin yung damit niya. At tinanggal naman, pero parang after several weeks, tumagal muna, and then parang halata sa likod na parang in na yung tattoo na yun. Now, ah, uh, ah, uh, Uh, former DDS operator si Las Cañas finally confirmed it. So, klarong-klaro na talaga. The picture is uh, becoming clear. Yun lang. I hope that uh, that uh, the, the Marcos government and the uh, agencies concerned like the uh, Bureau of Investigation, the, the Bureau of Customs, Department of Finance, 
The office of the ombudsman, kaso lang wala eh, wala talaga tayong pag-asa diyan. Ang inappoint ba naman diyan yung ombudsman ni Duterte na natulog lang sa buong six years at pinoprotekta lang uh, yung mga involved sa Parmalis scam at saka sa uh, 4.6 billion overpriced computer scam, yun lang ginawa ng ombudsman. Wala nang kinasuhan, hindi tulad sa Pinoy administration na nakulong at nakasu nakus nakasuhan, na aresto at nakulong. Sila former Senator uh, Estrada, Jingoy, si Bong Revilla, former Senate President uh, uh, Juan Ponce Enrile at si Janet Lim Napoles. Pero sa <laughs> time ni Duterte, wala. So I, I hope, I hope matanggal yan, matanggal yan, mapalitan yan na uh, Ombudsman and uh, we still hope, hoping against hope, that the Marcos administration we re we really show that they are also concerned about the wastage of public funds through smuggling, through uh, 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 unbridled or uncontrollable graft and corruption. So let's see if uh, the Marcos go government is up to the task and uh, kung meron ba talaga silang uh, Uh, bayag, <laughs> balls to do it, and principles and independence to do it, and incorruptibility. Ang problema kasi kung takot rin sila sa mga multo nila, sa mga sarili nilang corruption, so wala talaga mangyari sa anti-corruption, anti-smuggling effort dito sa bansa. But we'll see, we'll see in the coming, in the coming years ng Marcos government. So again, uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to share this vlog to friends and relatives and to subscribe to the Blogcaster Armandin YouTube channel and see you in my next vlog.